Hey guys, in this video we're going to start to look at super globals. So super globals, as you can see in the PHP documentation, are built-in variables that are always available in all scopes. Okay, so we can access them from uh, a global scope, from inside functions, inside classes, wherever. Uh, they're basically system variables. And there's all different kinds. We're definitely not going to get to all of them in one video. Uh, for instance, post we'll use when we work with processing forms, get we'll use when we work with uh, query strings inside of URLs. In this video, I want to start with server, okay? Uh, and server is just that. It, it, it holds information about not only the server, but file paths, um, client info, like the client's browser that that's viewing the web page, the client IP address in, in a lot of cases. So what I want to do is kind of do a little project where we create uh, a web page that tells us information about the server and then and also a little bit of information about the client. Okay, so instead of just um, you know writing mindless code, I want to actually create something. So let's go ahead and open up our PHP sandbox. I'm going to create a new folder called website two. And inside here, we're going to create a file and save it as index.php. This is where we'll have our markup. And then I just want another file that we'll save as server. We'll say server-info.php. Okay. And what I want to do is create an associative array for the server info and also one for the client info. And then we'll display it in a nice web page and we'll even use Twitter Bootstrap. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and go into server info and create our PHP tags. I'm actually only going to create the, the top. Well, no, we're going to need the bottom as well. Okay, and then this is going to be on the ser whoop, server super global. Okay, now notice with the super globals, they all begin with, well, except for globals. They begin with money sign underscore and then whatever that variable is. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is create an array. Let's say create server array. And then we're also going to create a client array. Okay, so it's just going to be an array with the different values in the super global. So let's call this server. And we're going to set it to just a set of brackets for an array. And it's going to be an associative array, meaning that we're going to define the key and the value. Okay, now if we click over here on server, it should tell us the different values we can use. All right, so let's take, for instance, server name. This gives us the name of the server host under which the current script is executing. If the script is on a virtual host, this will be the value defined for that virtual host. So basically, it's the host um, server name. So let's go ahead and add a key here, which will be a string, and we'll say host server name. All right, and we're going to set that to the server super global, okay, which is an array, and then we want server underscore name. Okay, so that should give us the server name. And then just to test it out, let's go ahead and just echo um, server, which is the name of our array. And then we want the host server name. OK, so let's save that. And then we'll go to uh, localhost slash PHP sandbox slash, uh, let's see, website two slash server info dot PHP. And it gives us a local host, okay? That's what we have for our host server name. All right, so next one I want to do is, let's see. Let's do HTTP host, uh, which is the contents of host header from current request if there is one. So I believe in this case, it's also going to be localhost. But let's say host header. And we'll set that to server host underscore header. OK, 
Okay, and then we can change this to host header. And let's see what that gives us. Uh, undefined index host header. I'm sorry, not host header. HTTP underscore host. Okay, so that's also local host. All right, so let's look at, let's see, I'm not gonna do all of these. Some of these won't even work in my case. Uh, let's look at server software, where is that? Um, right here, server identification string given in the headers when responding to requests. So this will basically tell us what the server is running. So let's go ahead and add server software and we'll set that to whoops I don't want that server underscore software and we'll echo that out okay let's save that and it tells us we're using Apache uh, 2.4.25 Windows 32, and we're using OpenSSL and PHP 7.1.1. Okay, so that's what that does. It just tells you what kind of server you're running, OS, things like that. Um, next thing we wanna know, and this is something that you'll probably use a lot, is your document root. Okay, so the root of your web server. So let's set that to server. Uh, document underscore root okay and in, what we can do here is instead of you know putting out each individual one we can actually do a print R and let's just look at the uh, the whole server array that we're create we created okay so now you can see that document root is C slash xamp slash ht docs and if you're using xamp most likely it'll be the same thing all right so let's see next one i want to do is the current page and we can get that we can get that with uh, php self so php underscore self and a lot of times when you're submitting forms if you want to submit to the same page you're on, you can put this as uh, as the action. All right, so let's go ahead and reload, and now you'll see current page is in PHP Sandbox, uh, website two, and then serverinfo.php. All right, another one we have is the script name, and some of these may be the same in in some cases. So we'll say server script name and you'll see that that is actually the same thing as well okay it gives us the location of the current script now if you want the absolute path because right here we're just we're going from HT docs but if you want the absolute path you can do that as well let's say absolute path and let's set that to server and this is going to be script underscore file name Okay, let's reload that, and you can see we get from the C drive all the way to our current script. All right, so that gives us all the server information. Not all of it, I mean, there are some other things here you can add. You can go ahead and experiment, but I don't wanna put every single one in. Um, now for the client array, let's go ahead and comment that out. We're going to set client equal to some brackets and first one we're going to do is we want to get the system info that the client's using. So we'll say client system info. And let's set that to our server. And we can get this with HTTP underscore user underscore agent. All right. And then let's do a print R for our client array. Okay, so client system info. Now this, uh, different browser manufacturers have different strings for this. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it says Mozilla 
and Chrome in here. Um, but if you look at Chrome, it says uh, 50 version 56.0.2924.87. And if I go to, let's say, uh, help and about, you'll see that that is, in fact, what I'm using. Okay, it also says uh, Windows 64 bit, which is what I'm on. I'm not sure why Safari and Mozilla are in here. I don't use this very much, um, but you can, you can use it as a fairly unreliable uh, way to tell what browser your clients are using. All right, so in addition to that, we can do uh, the client IP address. So we'll say client IP. Uh, and let's set that to server underscore, uh, I'm sorry, server, and then remote underscore ADDR. All right, so let's save that. And that's gonna just give me this uh, colon colon one. I'm actually on the same machine as my server, so that's not gonna work. Um, but generally, this will return the, the user's IP address. Okay, you can also get the remote port. So let's say uh, remote port and set that to server and then remote port. Okay, and you can see that uh, remote port from, for this, uh, for me, is 627. Three, four. All right, so what I want to do now is let's comment this out and we're going to go to our index PHP page and build out a web page and, and include some of this info. So let's put in our basic HTML tags for the title. We'll say system info and then I'm going to include bootstrap. So I'm going to go to bootstrap uh, bootstrapcdn.com and just grab this link here which is the CSS file. All right, so we'll say href and let's paste that in. Okay, and let's see, we shouldn't need anything else in the head. So now in the body, well actually we do need to uh, bring our server info file in. So up here, let's do a PHP include, which we've already gone over. And we're going to include server-info.php. Okay, and then down here, let's add a div. And we'll give it a class of container, which is a bootstrap class. Just pushes everything in the middle. Okay, and then let's put an h1, and we'll say server, say server and file info. And under that, what we're going to do is, is test for the server to make sure it's there, this variable. Um, now, I haven't gone over this yet, but there's actually a shorthand, peach, uh, shorthand PHP if syntax, or not just if, but uh, for loops, for each, all that stuff. So what we can do is we can say PHP if server, and instead of you know opening it here, closing the tag and then doing it down for the, the closing bracket, what we can do is just use a colon here and go like that. And then down here, say PHP and if. Okay, so it's a this is a better way to do it if you're actually inside of an HTML, if you're inside HTML markup. Okay, so if there's a server, then let's put a UL here and we'll give it a class of list group. All right, and then what we want to do is loop through each value in this server array, and we want to output not only the value but also the key. Okay, so let's do a uh, for each. So for each, and we're gonna um, we're gonna use the key and the value. So we'll say for each server value as, and then the key, and then also the value. And we can also use that shorthand syntax here as well. So down here we can say PHP and uh, for each. Okay. And then for each value we have, we want an li. And I'm going to give this a class of list group item. 
and inside here, uh, let's see, let's do the key and the value. I'm going to put the key inside of strong tags though. Okay, so let's go and say PHP echo key. Oops, echo key, and then we'll put a colon and a space. And then after the strong tag, let's do PHP echo value. Okay, and that should do it. So let's save that, and then we're going to go to um, localhost PHP sandbox slash website two. You can get rid of that server info file. And there we go, server and file info. We have the server name, the host header, the software, the document root, the current page that we're on, the script name that we're on, and then the absolute path of the page that we're on. Okay, so pretty handy. Now we want to do the same thing with the client stuff. So let's just copy from this h1 to the end if. And we'll just paste that in. And let's say client info. And then we'll test for the client variable. And then we just want to loop through the array that's in the client variable. And everything else should stay the same. So we'll save that, reload, and there's our client info. All right, so that's it. That's the server super global. And we were able to create a nice little script here that tells us the information on the server as well as what we can on the client. Okay, so hopefully you guys like this. Um, our next few videos are going to be on different super globals, for instance, form processing. Um, I'll show you how to, how to pass along queries in the URL, things like that. All right, so thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.